Hello, welcome to the weather update. It is about 940. It is September 11th, 2022. And yes, of course, a very sad, somber day remembering what happened. Um, back in, you know, I, it's still it's still very sad. Uh, and the weather kind of fit the mood uh, for this somber day. Just a lot of light rain, a gray day. Um, not a lot of rainfall, but uh, just a gray day. Plenty of clouds pretty much the whole day. Uh, and you can see uh, pretty much stuck in the clouds. You can see some heavier activity that's popped up off the Delmarva, but that's we're not going to see that. We're mainly seeing this light rain activity, which is what we're seeing over our area. If you go ahead and look at the radar, you'll see again uh, that we have this light rain um, again over our area here. So it's just been mainly moving through occasional light showers and stuff. Uh, if we look at the underground map, uh, you'll see here, uh, we'll look at the precipitation. It's also very cool out. Temperature's generally in the mid-60s, though it's damp, uh, but it's cool. Uh, and you can see maybe a little bit warmer over Jersey, but more or less low 70s, upper 60s. Uh, it is damp out there. Dew points generally in the mid-60s and close to 70 in New Jersey, so a little more, a little more humid there. Let's take a look at the rainfall. Um, and it's really not a lot. Like I said, it's just been a light rain, just enough to make it gray and miserable we're not really putting not really alleviating the drought that much at all uh not even a quarter of an inch just a 0.01 barely anything uh from this um and we'll see if they did any better in new jersey um eh, not really some areas looks like in central jersey got into some heavy heavier rain maybe a half an inch there but other than that still very very dry um and let's now go and look at the weather map for the country and you'll see here again it looks like the heat wave out west has been alleviated a little bit and that's because of the, some of that moisture from k which believe it or not has made it up a little further if we look at the radar and pull this out uh, you can see uh there's been a few showers here well i don't really see that much what we could do actually let me go with this we could actually take a look at the rainfall in california let's do that I'll move this all the way over to california and show you the rainfall so they've gotten a little more rainfall a little bit a little more moisture in the air i don't really see a whole lot of rain actually here but if you look at the dew points uh and the temperatures they are a little hot a uh, cooler uh they've cooled off a little bit compared to what the way it's been so it's definitely helped a lot uh more of that onshore flow uh that uh that is helping the situation a little bit um so uh let's go take a look at the weather map here on this and if we go and we look again uh let's go out west and take a look and see what's going on out there right now um because they still have a lot of fires going you'll do the pacific coast that's fine uh you can see those clouds so you see the clouds there so i wanted to use it so it's not as dry it's helping a little bit contain the fires a little bit um and that's helping get some so it looks like some clouds and uh, maybe maybe a chance of a shower it looks like i see a few showers over there maybe popping up uh perhaps over there though i didn't see them on the radar perhaps there are some showers there that are helping a little bit compared to the way it's been because if we go to the way it's been uh you'll see first of all here's k uh and uh again here's the smoke from all those wildfires again uh but you'll see more clouds and a little moisture coming so that's helping uh, it moistened the air up a little bit. This was yesterday's satellite, and man, uh, just an incredible uh, plume of smoke coming out of Oregon here and Washington too. It looks like there's a big fire near, was a big fire near Seattle uh, yesterday. So uh, yeah, they were probably dealing with a lot of smoky haze too. I bet that one looks like that exploded as well. And you see a whole bunch of them. They're just all over the place out west. And this is what's left of K. Uh, and let's go to today, and you'll see for us. Uh, this is uh, extra tropical now. Earl is extra tropical. Uh, and, uh, yep, and you can see the smoke again stretching as far north as Greenland. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be a question mark whether we'll actually have clear skies because it looks like I see another fire uh, in Canada here and smoke. So we'll have to see if we see any smoke from that or not uh, once we get this low pressure system out of here. That'll be bringing us some rain. Uh, again, we have a chance of showers. Um, so, uh, let's go to the, back to this again, uh, and, uh, we will go into our area and take a look at our conditions again out there. You can see 
generally 64, 2.64. And it's been like that pretty much most of the day. We'll go and take a look and see what the day was like here at Islip. So 67 of the dew point, just a gray, gloomy day, fitting for the day that it was. And you can see it was a little warmer earlier. I should get close to 80. Actually, I guess the sun was trying to come out a little bit at times, I guess, to warm it up a little bit. But then if you look at the well, that's why it was warmer. See, we had more of a westerly flow, and the winds became more easterly and northerly. Then the temperatures dropped, uh, and that's what brought in its drizzle and light rain and, you know, kind of depressing, miserable conditions across our area. Uh, we will take a look at what the highs were today, uh, and you'll see those highs were all set earlier on in the day probably. Again, so got in the upper 70s generally across the area. Um, and the other thing I want to just do, we're going to push this back to here. And I want to go back and look at what's going on in, uh, in this area here where Earl is. Because it looks like they're getting some pretty strong winds uh, from the remnants of Earl here. Look at that. Wind gust up to 51 here in Newfoundland here. So they're getting some pretty strong winds here uh, in these areas here. St. John's as well. Some gusts up to 24. So they're getting some strong winds. Um... Probably not much rain out of this. It's probably just the wind aspect of it. Uh, we can take a look and see if they've gotten any rain. I don't see any reports for any rain here. I doubt it. Uh, but you can see it's been pretty strong, the winds. And we can also look at some of the wave reports, too, as well, uh, from Earl as well. Let's see if we can get a buoy here. This looks like a buoy. Let's see if it's got some wave reports. Um, let's see. Uh, it does not have any wave reports. Those water temperatures are warm for that far north. Mid-60s is kind of warm. Uh, but I'm looking for um, some actual wave reports here. If they have any buoys that are reporting waves, because that's what I'd like to see. But it doesn't seem like they have any. Let's see. Maybe there's one over here. All right, let's see. Waves. Let's see if they got the waves here. It's annoying. Sometimes they just don't have them. And again, it's missing. I don't understand why they don't have the wave heights here. I don't understand why they don't have that. I really would like to see that. I don't know why they don't have it, but you know what? They just don't want us to see it for whatever reason. Let's see. Maybe this one will show wave heights. All right, here we go. 16.4 feet. All right, so that's pretty high. That's pretty high. So you're yeah, getting to see some big waves from or the worst of it's out in the middle of the ocean. Um, we can take a look and see what is going on in our offshore waters here because Earl's probably kicking things up a little bit for us too. No wave heights in that one. Oh, let's see if we can find one that actually reports the wave heights. It'd be nice. I'm sorry I'm wasting your time, but uh, they just don't want to make it easy. Uh, no wave heights here either. All right. Well, I guess we're just not going to know the wave heights. So, yeah, I don't know. We don't have the, we don't have the wave heights. So I don't know what they uh, what they are, and I'm sorry I can't provide them for you. Because like they just don't want to make it easy to get this information for whatever reason. Um, so let's go to the NHC National Hurricane Center. You can see nothing going on here. Eastern Pacific, you got another area that they're watching here. Um, but let's now go take a look at uh, how things are going to pan out for the next week as we look at the long-range forecast. And we'll start with the upper air pattern, the jet stream. And uh, you'll see here, again, the jet stream remains to be kind of a mess here. Uh, you can see uh, there's like a cutoff flow. That's what's going to bring us that kind of chance of some showers for tomorrow. It's going to be more over in the morning. We'll take a look at this morning. And uh, then in the, uh, I think, Tuesday morning, we'd have another chance. But then we have this uh, wheat trough coming in. But you can see, again, the jet stream is just completely dysfunctional here. Um, we start to have some bigger troughs toward the end of the period, which would bring in some more cool downs. But, I mean, very dysfunctional-looking jet stream. Um, and if we go to the upper air height anomaly, uh, you will see here, again, uh, there's that cutoff. All right, that moves away, and then we get to see some ridging again. Uh, and then as we get toward the end of parts of the month, maybe some bigger troughs can come down and bring down some cooler air masses. But when we look at things like this, you know... What this all pans out, and that means we're going to have see probably temperatures above normal once again. So, uh, going into your Monday tomorrow, see we'll be above normal. We're going to be above normal Tuesday. Uh, to our west, it's near normal to below normal, above normal Wednesday. Even behind this so-called front, 
uh, Thursday. We'll finally knock it down to near normal Thursday and Friday uh, before warming up again for the weekend. And you'll see some really major warmth there. Looks like affecting the Midwest, and some of that might spill into our area. And then maybe we'll get some below normal temperatures as we head to the later part of the month. Of course, that is a long way away. Uh, so let's go now to the surface map on the GFS, which is what we're looking at, of course. Uh, and you'll see here, here's that low, uh, that cutoff low. So we had, brings us a chance of precipitation, clears on out of here t later Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, got high pressure and we're dry. And we will be dry for a while until uh, the next chance of rain, maybe as we get toward the later part of the month with that trough. So yeah, it's going to stay on the dry side. You know, we do have some rain chances. Uh, so let's go take a closer look at our area here, and uh, we'll uh, go to the HRRR model. And so uh, here we are uh, for oh, the overnight. And you'll see a couple of showers. And it looks like it's popping up some heavier showers and maybe even some thunderstorms. Oh, that would be so great if that would go right over the Pine Barrens. That would be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome if we could get some de decent downpours out there. That would be great. Uh, then after that, though, the rest of the day is dry. Uh, and then we have the next chances with the next little wave coming through here overnight later tuesday night into when uh, later monday night to tuesday morning could be some showers and thunderstorms and then maybe a slight chance in the afternoon on tuesday later on tuesday but then after that that's all out of here um so let's go take a look at what our new points are at the surface and our wind flow uh so you get like you have the kind of air mass we are in and you can see southerly flow uh tomorrow and then becomes actually northwesterly for a little bit uh before becoming southerly again um so that could heat things up, perhaps, especially if the sun comes out. And there's some models that indicate that. Um, and that might help add to some instability. But either way, you know it's going to be humid. Uh, and Tuesday, we start off with humid conditions. You can see southerly winds. And then as we get toward later in the day, especially toward the evening, the winds go westerly. And that's going to bring in the drier air. Uh, so now let's look at the temperatures. And yes, we will look at the rainfall as well. So we're looking at the temperatures tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be around 80 degrees, it's saying right here. So with those temperatures, probably not too much uh, in the way of sun, but there are a few models out there that were indicating some breaks. Obviously, muggy night tomorrow night. And then Tuesday, will be in the mid-70s. And if we want to go further than that, then we would need to look at the GFS. But let's go look at the total accumulated precip here. And yeah, look at this. I like this because this is showing over two inches over Suffolk County. That would be absolutely awesome for the Pine Barrens uh, if, we could, if we could get that to happen. Uh, because as we know it's been very very dry out there and that's something that i've been very concerned about um uh the dryness continuing and it's straight you know the pines are tough but the, this this drought is even testing them uh and you know new jersey's been a little better off in regards with the rainfall uh, of course this is just one model the h triple r uh there are other models we could use to take a look at the rainfall and i will do that as well this is the fv3 uh, and only I'd have to use the older run of this. This is the higher resolution GFS, and you can see doesn't it? It does keep it. It has the rain, heavier rain further south, um, so it's kind of it, it's got a little bit of a different look to it. Uh, though the timings are kind of similar, uh, just depending on where these showers and thunderstorms form. Uh, and if we were to look at the total accumulated precipitation on here, you'll see maybe a few areas of Suffolk County get that one to two inches, but most of us kind of don't, all right? Uh, then there's the NAM, three kilometer, which we can also use. And again, I don't have enough of the zero Z run of that, uh, but we can run this through. And you can see the NAM's not really too impressive right there. So let me go back to, let me go to the GFS now, and we will go and look at our dew points and wind flow. So as we get beyond Tuesday, uh, you'll see that westerly wind coming in, northwesterly winds, much lower dew points on Wednesday, much more comfortable. Um, and then we have another front that comes through on Thursday that's going to shift the winds a little more to the north, drop the temperatures and the dew points. Uh, uh, that, that will bring us some nice weather for Long Island. And then as we head toward the weekend, you'll see the southwesterly flow set up, bringing a return to some warmer and more humid conditions. Uh, let's look at the temperatures now. Uh, so temperatures uh, as we head into, this is the GFS, is a little warmer uh, for Tuesday than the HRRR. So GFS gets us uh, uh, closer to 80 degrees, perhaps, or maybe even above that on Tuesday. 
Uh, and then for Wednesday, we'll have highs in the upper 70s to around 80, which is still above normal. But here we go. It drops down Thursday. We've got mid-70s. It's going to be much more. It's going to be more comfortable on Thursday. Friday, too. Also mid-70s on Long Island. Nova Jersey could be a little starting to warm up already closer to 80. And then for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you could see we are back in the mid-80s again. Uh, but then you could see it looks, it looks like a backdoor front trying to set up next Sunday. Uh, that's, I mean, we can go a little further here into the long range show you uh, that we still have above normal temperatures and we have to wait to the end of the period to actually start seeing some below normal temperatures. Um, so let's go look at the skies next, obviously. Um, and this is the skies, obviously, tomorrow. You can see it could be some breaks, all right? Uh, for Tuesday, starting off the clouds, maybe a little more sun in the afternoon pe peeking through. Uh, Wednesday could be a pretty sunny day. Uh, Thursday should be a very nice day. Uh, and then Friday, we might have a little more in the way of high clouds. Of course, the smoke, well, that's a wild card. We just can't tell yet. But it looks like Friday would be sunny as well. And then Saturday, you start seeing some of those clouds. Pa looks like that system passing in the south could throw us some clouds and maybe some clouds around on Sunday. Of course, this is the GFS. It's a lower resolution cloud model. Um, I could use the um, FV3, uh, which is the high resolution model with this. And you can see, again, there's some breaks tomorrow that could pop up. Uh, Tuesday, more likely to see uh, breaks of sunshine toward the uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, let's go look at the RGM next. And here is the RGM, and you will see again that um, here we are for Monday, and you see those breaks that we could start seeing. So we could get some breaks, and that could make it a little warmer. So 80 is not out of the question tomorrow. Uh, and then it's a little slower to move the clouds away on Tuesday, but Wednesday looks fairly clear. Uh, and uh, we should have nice weather if that, and you can sort of see there's that secondary cold front. So there's the secondary. You can draw it for you. Right here, you can clearly see. Here's your secondary cold front right here. Um, that would come through, and this uh, may just generate some clouds. I don't think it would uh, bring any chances for rain. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's go take a look now. Now that we're done with all that. Let's go to the um, Ventu Sky model, and we're just going to use this to look at the Cape and the thunderstorm threat uh, as we head into the overnight hours. So let's uh, go to. I don't think there'll be any severe weather uh, chances, um, but uh, again, those, some of those showers look pretty heavy, so um, probably not severe severe conditions, but this tomorrow there's some over us. Uh, you know, it's mostly off to the west, but again, if those breaks come through and it's humid, uh, you, know, you never know, you never know. Well, we will go to the SPC and see here's Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday actually looks a little more impressive uh, for the uh, thunderstorm activity. Uh, so we will want to look at the Storm Prediction Center for that as well. Uh, so let's go to the Storm Prediction Center uh, and uh, look at that. And no organized severe thunderstorms forecast for now. But what about day two? Uh, well, there's a marginal risk just to our west. Um, and then for uh, Tuesday, yeah, there's a marginal risk actually over the eastern half of Long Island. So I'll have to watch and see if we can get some thunderstorms going. This whole season has been, oh my gosh, it's been... So one, it's not only one of the hottest summers, but it, the complete lack of thunderstorm activity has made it just very, very boring from a weather perspective. It's very bad for the plants, and it's also very bad for people who like to watch thunderstorms as well. Um, so, um, yeah, that's not good. Let's go to the uh, climb. Oh, nope, not there. Climate Prediction Center. Uh, so 6 to 10 day outlook, still above normal. Uh, for it looks like it goes to below normal in the west, so they'll get some relief from the heat. Uh, and precipitation, we're on the edge of a below normal on the 6 to 10. 8 to 14 has us above normal uh, from the Midwest all the way through the Great Lakes. So, yeah, another warm pattern again that we are in. Uh, waiting again when you don't have the jet stream in a normal pattern. Uh, this is the kind of crap that you have to deal with. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's all very messed up, as you see. You can tell even by looking at this. And I don't know if I pointed this out in the last weather update, and I meant to, uh, but there's just been a ton of smoke over South America. I don't if you, I'm sure you've noticed this. I don't know what it's coming from. I don't know if I brought this up already, but it's just a ton of smoke. It's like they have fires going there or something. Uh, I've heard that they actually try to burn the forest on purpose, which is horrible, and they should not be allowed to do that at all. 
Um, but anyway, this is today's uh, high-resolution satellite, and you can see we may still not be out of the woods with the smoke. You can see there's some wildfire smoke there that might wind up making its way toward us and affecting us on one of those days that it was supposed to be nice and clear. We'll have to see. Maybe we won't see it. It's very hard to predict that it's out of range right now for the uh, HRRR uh, vertically integrated smoke uh, right now. But at least they're getting a little relief from the heat out west and maybe hopefully they get these fires into control because uh, it's just been unbelievable what's been going on out there. It's uh, another sign of the real deep, deep, deep mess that we're in. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up this weather update. Have a good night.